Welcome back to um, Think Tech Hawaii, uh, Human Humane Architecture here today with every other week's um, learning from the past for the future with your host, DeSoto Brown. Thank you very much. Actually, you're the host and I'm the co-host. Both. Okay, okay. okay. All right, all right. <laughs> we've, got a, we've got a nice uh, hot lava photograph behind us we got, because... Yeah. We're talking about volcanic volume. Yeah. Today we're actually broadcasting from our lava rock capital yes. of Honolulu. Yes, Hawaii. we are. Yes, we are. And um, if we um, can get picture number one. All right. And um, so we really want to talk about what we see and the uh, things that buildings are made out of right. on this island. And this is my neighborhood. I live right next to that. So I'm walking by. It's one over, ever over off the uh, Foster Tower. And I'm seeing this build with heavy steel and light gauge steel. Then it's wrapped and it's drywalled. And all these materials, we could say, if they would complement the island and be better than what we have, it's good. But steel, unless it's exposed and you can repaint it, um, it rusts. Right. And, and drywall is an ironic term because in the tropics, it tends to get wet and molds. Yes. But what I find the most hideous here is that as they had started here, at the end, after doing this wrapping and layering, they basically clad it with wood right. to come across as local. Correct. And that's faking it. Exactly. Right. right. And so it, it makes me really think about how do we build here, because this is actually the way we build where I'm from yeah. in Germany. We just had gotten snow. And so we have to bundle up. It's we cold. have to wrap in layers. Yes. And uh, here we don't have to do that. Correct. And so why are we building in, in this way? Right. So where I'm from, just the next picture um, reflecting, the two top pictures are from where I'm actually from northern Germany. We have you know, some forests, but not many. So we put a wooden stud every three feet. And then we infill it with some uh, sod brick in that case. And the bottom one is our branch office in Munich at the other end of Germany down south where we got the Alps and the Black Forest, which is what Americans can yes. you know, associate Germany with. Right. And, and they used uh, at the top floor is, is uh, heavy timber, is logs. And in both cases, we try to sort of investigate and evolve that sort of tradition right. of substance versus, versus so, uh, surface. Correct. So the, the next picture shows us, uh, you, you can talk about this in any kind of region in the world. Any indigenous culture had no other chance than yes. make something out of nothing, nothing being basically what they had around them. Correct. And the most striking example is certainly the Inus or the Eskimos, which had nothing but snow. Right. And they made one of the most genius structures that have the perfect ratio between volume and surface and staying warm. You can actually stay warm, warm in an igloo. Yeah. There was this guy who yeah. shipwrecked. Did you hear about him? And they made him take off his clothes, which yeah. he was embarrassed because he was Western. And they saved his life because only naked under that yeah. one uh, animal uh, fur, yeah. he was able to survive naked right. because of that incredible thermal performance yeah. of an eagle. He was giving off heat, and the heat was being kept in. Exactly. Right, right. So you being from here and you know working on this subject, explain to us how your ancestors have been dwelling. Well, exactly is what you just said. In this situation, you use what is located in your environment. You cannot bring things in. You're not importing things. And so Hawaiians lived in hale, hale pili, meaning a framework out of logs and sticks and branches, and then thatched with pili grass. And that is a very light structure, but we've discussed in the past how that's good in terms of, you know, uh, air movements and so forth. But they didn't just build a holly peely on the bare ground. They built a foundation first. Mm -hmm. And you can see in the foreground of the photograph in the bottom that there's also a, a rock wall there. And I think if we go to our next picture, we're going to see what we're talking about. And so in the next picture, we've got... Um, the volcanic source that we're talking about here for basalt. The top picture is Diamond Head, as seen from Martin's uh, little home in Waikiki. And the bottom picture is Kilauea Volcano on the island of Hawaii. That is erupting basalt. 
And we're basically talking about basalt being taken out of the ground and turned into buildings. But not every volcano that erupts gives off the same mm -hmm. stuff. And let's go to the and two. Be, because I'm not from here. Yeah. I'm safer, I hope. Yeah. So I talked to Pele. OK. And we cut a deal that okay. I bring these two here. OK, There's so camera let's, camera. Uh, yeah, so come, come show, the, show, the, show our two rocks. And you get this one here. OK. And I get the other one. OK. And these two rocks that we are showing are here because we're talking about basalt. And so, but basalt is not always the same thing exactly. So if we put these two together, it may not show too clearly. But when you look at them in reality, they are quite different. They're a little different color. The texture is different. The density is mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. This one has small other objects sort of included in it. And yeah. that is important when you are using basalt. Yeah. If you're making a building, you want it to be uniform, yeah. and you've got to take it from the same location. And, and that's because nature down there that shoots up the magma right. is not an industrial process. Right. It's highly sort of informed by the pressure that differs, and by the flow that differs, and by and the duration the, that differs. And the, uh, the chemical makeup. Exactly. And so what comes out of the ground is not always the same exact mm -hmm. thing. Exactly. So as we continue, we're going to be seeing different types of uh, buildings that have different Different facades, yeah. different whatever. Yeah, but we start out with uh, the next picture is uh, to say that unfortunately these, as uh, seeing them in architecture, it's almost gone. Right. And as you provided, you found this article and contributed that. It's they, they, if so, they're mostly seen as sort of decorative pieces in your garden yep. or as little fountains. But we're even reading that we weren't quite sure if they're actually even rock. That's they right. actually made basically fiberglass right. or concrete, and there's right. some form as some mold uh, that you pour it from. So this gives us a clue that there is sort of some disturbed uh, relationship that we might have developed to this uh, very original, this material. Uh, authentic material to Correct. us. Correct. And uh, next picture is introducing De Soto as the author, as a scholar who has written this article here about Correct. the subject matter. And um, we want to, in the following, uh, show at least two projects out of it. And we want to start out with the one on the bottom right. And we want to, if you can get the next picture, we want to start sort of chronologically in saying, um, you know, before we get into buildings, right. you know, rocks have been used, volcanic rocks have Forever. been used for more landscaping, mm -hmm. right? And utilitarian purposes, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Right. So the book that we just saw, which is called Pohaku, was published in 2003. And it's about stone structures in Hawaii. And I wrote two articles, one about Shangri-La, which is what we're looking at here, and another, the other subject, which we'll get to a little later in the program. And Shangri-La is the home of Doris Duke. And it was built in the 1930s. And you can see it's on Black Point. And a lot of the topography of this location was very minimal. It was a sloping, sort of a not too impressive site, very pleasant. And at the time that she had this built, she had this huge retaining wall built as well as a little harbor, all built out of basaltic rock. Mm -hmm. And this caused a big problem at the time because she had to get special permission from the federal government to alter the coastline as much as she did. Mm -hmm. And it kind of elevated her above all the rest of the poor people below so that she had more privacy. Mm -hmm. And again, that's just a lava rock wall. Yeah. And in the next picture, that's what we're going to see again. Here's that same process going on. And you can see it even better in 1937. Really tall rock wall being built at Shangri-La. And there's the scaffolding on the right that is the construction, the way that they built the darn thing. Mm -hmm. And in our next picture, we also see that rock is not always used for fine purposes like building facades, etc., because it has this utility of being used for bridges and drainage canals. And in the upper picture, it's a little bridge over uh, the Moanalua Stream and Moanalua mm -hmm. Gardens. So you're basically like reconstructing, rearranging the material that's already right. there. You just right. re exactly. organizing the rock. Exactly. <laughs> because you're digging up the rocks yeah. as you do this. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the picture on the bottom is the Kapalama Canal. Mm -hmm. They just lined the canal, they put concrete down, and they built a little bridge out of the rock that was yeah, there. Yeah. And up to these days we actually use it and that what we see at the next picture, right? We might not always pay attention to it if we're on a bicycle. Or uh, walking. More, or walking, right. exactly. And but I'm happy they, they, they put in these kind of concrete 
a spacer between actually the asphalt right. of the street because I can bicycle on that. It's almost like an informal <laughs> yeah, right. bicycle lane. Right. That's where the worst potholes used to be. So I'm right. really happy about that. But we right. don't want to talk about that. We'd want to talk about the edge. Right. And so this is again something that which you probably would not do today. This is, I think, an older conc uh, an older basalt curb stones which mm -hmm. were replaced in a modern, uh, more modern street, probably be constructed in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of street curbs like this in Honolulu, yeah. which again, as you said, you don't necessarily notice, but this mm -hmm. is a level of handwork that we won't do anymore. Yeah. And that's a very universal theme because I actually grew up with that too, right. believe it or not, in right. the next picture. Right. And we call this uh, we call this Kopfsteinpflaster, and that means um, head stone pavers. <laughs> and uh, and you immediately said, "Hey, Martin, and there's a very special way you lay them, right. and that's why I pulled this picture up right. to the left in this sort of fan-like shape." Right, right. And I should have put a picture in of the house um, I spent my youth, the second part of my youth, which the street was still paved that way. And it was very noisy when the cars were driving yes. over, and it was very slippery. Yes. And back in the days where the wagon trains, always the wooden yeah. wheels broke, right? right? Right. And as you pointed out, these are maybe not the main reasons why they're not around anymore. The main reason is the cost of labor. Sure. Because you got to lay them piece by piece, yes. and no one can afford that anymore. No, 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 of course not. And again, it's a very distinctive thing, but that is basaltic rock mm -hmm. in Germany, mm -hmm. just like we have basalt rock mm -hmm. here in the Hawaiian Islands. But now we get out of the grounds and finally right. introduce um, uh, lava rock to more conventional Correct. pieces of architecture. Next picture, please. Right. And there is the Coco Palms Hotel. Those are the cottages at the Coco Palms Hotel. And we did a show about the Coco Palms Hotel at one point. That's what you can see in the upper corner. But here, not only are the rocks lining the, the, the bank of that little, little canal that we see, but they are, in fact, the foundation structures of each one of these little bungalows that we see as well. Yeah. So, and they go a little higher, like to the window still, right? Correct. So like correct. an elevated foundation. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so we're now about to see more of those kinds of buildings, as well as accessories to some of those buildings, I think. And in the next picture, this is a photograph taken about 1960. This is on Kalani Iki Street. And it is, as you can tell in the background by the style of the houses, a modern housing development, housing uh, subdivision. But in the foreground are rock walls made from, again, the same on-site rock, which form not only um, a barrier between the street and the property, but also that gives you a level lawn right in front of your, yeah, yeah. Right in front of your front door to um, make life a little bit more comfortable mm -hmm. on a sloping site. And another example of that you you photographed in Kaimo Key, and I remember that one too when I had a friend who lived there. And that's the next picture, and actually the next pictures. Right. So this is just the same thing in a little bit more excessive way, right? Correct. And the interesting thing about this house is it has a lot of Japanese elements. Mm -hmm. And although it's not easy to see, the base of these very substantial walls has a little flare at the corners, yeah. which mimics the style that's used for Japanese castle bases, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. usually have a moat oh, around them. Oh, you see them. actually on the next picture, can we you get can see, the next yeah. picture? On the, yeah, see yeah, a little bit. A little bit, in the mm -hmm. upper left corner, you mm -hmm. can see that little bit of flare mm -hmm. that is specifically meant to make this look more Japanese, uh -huh. as, of course, the woodwork does have yeah, the same yeah. elements as well. And another project in, in the neighborhood in Kaimoki, uh, this is the next picture, stands for the aspect yeah. of durability because yeah. you said, well, this puzzles you this side because this building has been burned down uh, quite a while ago yeah. and has been a ruin ever since. And this is a prime piece of land, so it's a mystery why yes. that hasn't been redeveloped. But it's good for us because right. it tells us, it teaches us these are not going to be eroded away, as right. one can see. They're just Correct. standing like the rock in the surf. Right, right? exactly. Weather, they, they weather, but uh, rather little. And, and uh, you know, as you said, this building burned down in, it was a private home in 1976. Yeah. And if those ruins weren't there, it would look like this was just a, a lot that had never even been developed. Exactly. So that means for people today who might not want the 
the termite guy to come every yeah. 10 years and throw that big tarp over the yes. house and poison it. Yes. You know, this sounds rather attractive. There are something that's of longevity, right? right and doesn't go right. away. Right. So we're going to go to the next picture, which is the first real building entirely out of rock, and that is also part of that, that article you wrote. Correct. These are the guard houses, or this is the guard house that is at Fort Ruger. And uh, Fort Ruger is on the slopes of Diamond Head. And the main road around Diamond Head, Diamond Head Road, passes through Fort Ruger. And there were two guard houses at either end of the property, of the military property. And it was always open to the public, so people could always drive through. Mm -hmm. My mother tells the story of driving past this guard house during World War II and being stopped by the sentry because she was speeding. Mm -hmm. oh, so, oh, oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. so she managed to not get in trouble for that. But yeah. these buildings, as you were just saying, the more stone you have, the stronger they are and the longer they last. There's very little that can burn here. Yeah. So if that, you know, if nothing catches on fire, you've got a building for the ages. Yeah, and that's obviously very appropriate for the military who wants durability and solidity. Exactly. And the next picture is, is showing a couple of, I, I took this one and you sort of um, um, misinterpreted um, yeah. for another one, so that's a good thing because there's actually two. There's one on Nimitz, and this one is on Mauna Kea, I think, close to King Street. And these are these very sort of rugged, there's almost more mortar in here, not quite, but there's a lot of mortar in there, and which obviously makes it easier because they don't need to cut you yes. know, the, the pieces you of don't stone have to do the so fine work to fit them together. Which is the next picture, which they then started to do. Right. And this is the Armstrong building on King Street at the canal there. And um, something interesting, I took this picture from Diamond Head side. You can see there is this sort of rougher wall on right. the left side of the bottom picture. And this is where my favorite alley is. It's only mm -hmm. three feet wide, and it's like a canyon. It's awesome. you got to go there. And that is sort of the, the cheaper side, right. whereas the front facade is the show off. It's the edges, yes. and the stones are very meticulously cut and, and dressed, as yes. you called it correctly. Yes. yes. And the next picture is, is another, and there are more out there. As always in our show, we right. just give you appetizer. You guys got to go out and right. find more, and there's tons out there. And you pointed out we can call this almost an international style, yes. because that's how building had been dressed and decorated almost anywhere on the East Coast in the United States and in Europe yeah, where it came from, in yeah. the United Kingdom especially. Right. Right. But this here has a local flair because they did not ship it in, Correct. which they could have done and did in some other cases, but they made it out of the local stuff. Correct. And this, as you pointed out, and I think that's interesting too, it's very rough. Each individual stone is different shape, mm -hmm. but there is a very strong structure to this entire mm -hmm. ornate facade. Mm -hmm. This is the Nipujiji building, which was a Japanese language newspaper. And uh, we're going to see there are surprisingly yeah. more buildings like this in Hawaii than you might think. Yeah. We're not sure, we we're guesstimating that might might also be already a hybrid construction because there might be some wood construction oh, behind, so yeah. this might not be any more like previously the Fort River, Correct. which is entirely Correct. out of. Because in some cases, which we'll get to, there were fires, then you can tell. Right. And if the buildings don't burn down, they're entirely out of stone. That's right. There's some combustible materials in there. Are. Which is a good way to segue us into the next picture in 21. From buildings that are very close to you, yeah. professionally and personally. Yeah. That's Hawaiian Hall. This is the interior of Hawaiian Hall at Bishop Museum. Mm -hmm. This is under construction in 1899. And as you look at the wall, you can clearly see it's just like the walls that we just saw, in which the rough textured rocks are just, because this is the interior, nobody was going to see this because it's been covered up. They didn't really do a lot of good finish here. The other interesting thing, though, is if you look on the right, there actually is a steel skeleton mm -hmm. inside this mm -hmm. building that holds it up. Yeah. And those are steel girders mm -hmm. on the right that are supporting what looks like just a stone yeah. building. So it's pretty much next picture. So we call it a wrapping. That's probably right. fair to say. Right? Correct. Building and there is the stone in the foreground that they quarried on mm -hmm. the site of Bishop Museum mm -hmm. and used to construct this rather massive and impressive looking Hawaiian Hall, and mm -hmm. again, this is 1899, mm -hmm. 1900, still stands today. Yeah, and we see it also finished uh, on the next picture. Right. In its original condition. Right, and this is Bishop Hall, mm -hmm. which is also on the Bishop Museum grounds today. This was, again, stone that was quarried on the site. This was the first classroom building for the Kamehameha Boys School, mm -hmm. which opened right about that same time and used to be located on the grounds of Bishop Museum today. And there is that same Richardsonian Romanesque 
exterior that we've just been talking about. Mm -hmm. And the next picture is one where we're talking about that hybrid construction and burning. You remember yeah. this one having burned down. Correct. Right? Okay, this is one of two similar large buildings on the campus of the Mid-Pacific Institute, which is in Manoa. And this is, uh, I don't remember the name of this building, but it was completed in 1910. Unfortunately, it burned down in 1950. Mm -hmm. And there was a great deal of wood inside it. The entire mm -hmm. roof is wood. All of the interior structures were wood. So when it burned, all the combustible stuff, as you said, burned mm -hmm. up, leaving this facade, but they chose not to rebuild it and, in fact, just demolished it. Mm -hmm. So all of the stonework is now gone. So sometimes stone exteriors can be deceptive mm -hmm. and they can look more yeah. robust than they yeah. really are. And sometimes the opposite way, and that gets us to the next pair of pictures, and this is a little quiz Yeah. you made me take. Yeah. And, you and did you, by the way, did you know what this was? No, of course not. Okay. So okay. No, no, no. <laughs> I thought maybe you did. Okay. Here, this picture, these two pictures were taken of a famous building in Honolulu under construction in 1926. And the interesting thing is, as you can see, again, there are the stone walls made up of individual pieces of basalt rock. And yet, this, the building which stands today doesn't look anything like this. And so when people look at these construction pictures, they have no idea what it was because it looks so different because the exterior has been altered or it was originally constructed to cover up those original Okay, rocks. now lift the blanket. Which building is it? Is and it? which building is it? Well, let's go to the next picture and everybody's going to see. There oh, it is on the no. right. There no it is on the way. right. It was no the way. Honolulu Academy of Arts, today's uh, Honolulu Museum of Art, and they added a sort of a rough textured but white stucco mm -hmm. that covers up all of those rocks. And this reminded me, and this is what the picture on the left refers to, my days in Lincoln, Nebraska. I can still say that well, Nebraska. My <laughs> home away from home yeah. where I went to school and started my teaching career. And here's my Lincoln in Lincoln. And But more importantly, the building in the back is by the same architect, um, Goodhue, Bernard Goodhue, and he was building the capital in Nebraska at the same time. And uh, same as in that case, it's what you see is not what you get because right. there's a steel structure right. is, is the main structure of the tower and then it's basically clad with stone. So you have a sort of same attitude, right. sort of Beaux-Arts attitude right. that was about decoration yes. and ornamentation and yes. cladding versus the old archaic sort of Egyptian monolithic. Right. Which again, right. modernism was kicking in. We're talking 1930s. Oh, so yes. labor, I mean, there was sort of the New Deal and these things. Absolutely. But besides that, it was it was still about, or it was already about uh, being more efficient and effective in, in construction. And, right? and the other interesting thing that, that I was saying about this uh, Nebraska State Capitol building is it was very unusual at the time for a state to build a high-rise or skyscraper building, mm -hmm. particularly, as you pointed out, in the middle of the prairie, yeah, where yeah. there was no necessity to build yeah. a tall, skinny building. Yeah. But they did it to be an iconic structure to represent their state. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, I think the Honolulu Academy of Arts building yeah. is very iconic yeah. in a lot of the ways that it looks, and yeah, also yeah. how they very cleverly added elements from different mm -hmm. cultures to yeah. put the whole building together to symbolize that the Hawaiian yeah. Islands are in the middle of the Pacific mm -hmm. with a mix of different cultures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's more to architecture than just what it immediately looks yeah. like. Yeah, it's the process and the making and the thinking and the relationship. Yeah. Getting to the end of the show, let's show a couple more pictures. The next one is uh, one that um, is my quiz that I'm saying, is this monolithic or is, this, is it a veneer? Because we can say here that there is, we find this topic so exciting that we're going to dedicate yeah. a volume two yep. to it. So next time in two weeks, we're going to talk about volcanic veneers and yes. ventilation because we want to talk about another thermal performance potentially. Right. And this one here is just one over diamond head of the hideous one that I started out the show with, right. that new renovation. And we featured this in the previous show, which also the little picture refers to where it was about crazy cantilever and canopies. But this one here is the diamond head end of it. This concave wall that has uh, basically the IZ uh, music always playing, you know, under the rainbow and that little poster in there. And it's uh, to me, it, it looks it looks pretty much solid and stereotomic, or maybe there's some uh, structure behind. Doesn't really matter. And the last picture, uh, that's two two pictures, is once again getting you home to yeah. where you work yeah, and talking is, about this project. Yeah, this is Bishop Museum's planetarium, which was under construction in 1960. And this is the first big building that was built on the campus 
in many, many decades. So it was very exciting. And if you look at the base of the dome, you can see the dome of the planetarium is under construction, but the mm -hmm. base is one of our rock mm -hmm. walls made out of basalt. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we go to our next picture, there is the planetarium and a modern structure that looks like the Jetsons could be there, but it uses this very interesting and traditional rock wall sculpture, mm -hmm. a rock wall structure, yeah, yeah. with the other stuff that's there. And I only thought I could use this to segue into the next picture because I thought this used to be a, a water pond, but you told me it wasn't. No. But there is one. So now we're saying um, if people get excited about working with lava stone here right. anymore, right. then people might say, well, then you dig up the island. And we say maybe you learn from the sibling island, which right. is the Canary, one of the Canarian islands right. way on the other side of the, of the, of the right. earth. In the Atlantic. But it has a similarity. It has many similarities. It's a volcanic nature, it's remote, and it's relying on external sources. It's mm -hmm. mainly tourism driven. Right. An engineer some 20 years ago, let's say, put this off the grid and they use wind turbine to pump up water into these uh, water basins they build and let it fall down, uh, generate hydroelectric power, and this island is off the grid. So yeah. this is an island, we're an island, maybe want to look into Correct. that one. And as you said, you dig up the volcanic stone to build something and then turn that into a reservoir. Exactly, and it's your stuff. And at the at the top left, they also have these Renault Twitsies, which are 100% electric right. cars, and it seemed very easy breezy. Yes. And so maybe look into that one. And so with that one, um, next picture is me thinking about uh, this summer when my parents showed me this amazing ca castle, which is called the Stolten Castle, and uh, they taught us there that actually the term basalt that we use originates from here. Which is amazing. So this in is Germany. amazing. So we in Germany had volcanic activities, yeah. uh, go figure. Yeah. And so the last picture is me at this very special day um, to say we're going to talk about volcanic veneers, which this is one that we right. did. Uh, but also, you forced me to put in the picture at the yes, bottom right. I did, and there is the very youthful Martin Despain with his father, and the two of you designed this structure. We, we did that, and yeah. today is a very special day because my father turns 77 years young. So oh, well, for him. Herzlichen Glückwunsch, Papa. Happy birthday, Dad. All the best, <laughs> health and happiness. And uh, with that, we're at the end of the show. Right. And we're going to see uh, you guys next week, hopefully, for David Rockwood's screens. And then in two weeks, we're going to see we're going us to talk about the volcanic, volume two. About volcanic veneers, and we're going to be talking about stone used in a slightly different way than what we talked about today, but same idea, but solid exactly. stone. And until then, rock solid, guys. Yes.